What's up, everybody? It's Tito Override, and I'm ready to bring the pain for you and Dr. Roto this week. Oh, yeah. Man, that was a killer, killer, killer game on Monday. Oh, it looked like looked like the Eagles dropped the ball on that one. They they was flying. They were soaring. Ca -ca, right? And then they, boom. That's right, Philly. Y'all got caught slipping. And that's what happens when you mess around with the team. I bet you like that, huh? Kirk Cousins getting it done. Got my boy Drake London, that touchdown. Totally awesome. Loved every minute of it. But, man, the Eagles, to me, just spread the ball to the wrong people. To me, you saw that you saw Callum, ta -ta 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 you know what I mean, man. I, I seen him, and I'm like, where is where is Dallas, man? Why is he not getting involved, right? And then you see them, I mean, Devonta Smith did exactly what he needed to do. But I feel like that there was just more opportunity that they could have seized on with Saquon Barkley and maybe Jahan Dotson and had opened the game up. They To me, Philly became very one-dimensional. And you could take this for what you worth or what it's worth. But Philly became very one-dimensional and it was very easy for Atlanta to smack that down at the end. Yeah, but man, seeing five, but seeing Robinson get on, the way he did it and seeing London step up, Pitts was a little lost in the sauce. So I kind of like th that. That kind of was like, uh, I thought he'd be more involved. I don't understand what's going on with why these players are not being more involved because right now. So, I mean, what, what do you do? What do you do? But you see the Falcons step up after that loss to the Steelers. And that just shows right there where these teams are defensively. Philly can't deal with it. And they didn't know how to close that game out. And like they learned the week prior, the Falcons, that is, that you got to play a good, hard, close game and you can pull that one out. And they did. And that was great. Hey, you know, got, got a 50-50 on FanDuel hit. The DraftKings lineup I threw in the subs only Discord was a little bunk. But hey, whatever. I mean, it hit the 50-50, but I, it didn't really do anything for you in anything else. But hey, that's all we're looking for is cash, right? So speaking of that, we had a... Sub actually bring up to us today, who is, uh, I think it's Selene. Yeah, he brought it up that he goes, hey, you know, I'm hitting, I'm missing, but I'm changing and things like that. So he kind of told us what he was playing. So let's just go over that real quick. When you play a 50-50 or a cash game and not just a double up, triple up or a quintuplet up, that just kind of for me, when you're playing those, you want to look for the single entry or only three entry level max. You have to understand. Right now, the the sites are definitely trying to gear a lot of people to the same contest. So sometimes in this one 100-man contest, top 12 score, which is only a 12% chance that you're going to score, you know, that's not a 50-50. You need something in that you need a real 50-50. The problem is a lot of the 50-50s don't always fill at, when it comes game time. So you're going to need to get these 50-50s during the game, day so that that goes over the whole it can fill it has chances to fill so people see it so that it gets to the top say you hit the third one down because that's what's going to happen is you're going to catch a lot of the people hitting in them early ones a lot of people get busy and forget to sh check their lineups because they're checking their seasonal lineups and you want to do that but try to stick to the one the single entry or three max entries when you play the cash games now over on DraftKings, they do have you know, they have their big, in FanDuel, for two bucks, they have the big double up. Where top 5,000 get paid out out of 11,000, like 600, 900, whatever it is. So that's a decent one to start with too, because you're going to double up, but that at least makes the payout around the 60% mark. Whereas like, you know, a normal 50-50s, you're at that 50-50 mark. And you got to remember too, when you play 50-50 in a, a single game entry, like a showdown slate, if you tie and you're like 49 or 50 and there's just not enough money and say they pay have to pay under the 50-50, you could actually lose money because I've, I've thrown in on a dollar or $2 one and instead of getting you know my dollar back, I only got 93 cents. So you, again, you got to watch the contest that you want to do. Hopefully that helps you. I know a lot of us stepped in and answered those questions fast and ferociously. That's awesome. So Thanks to the crew for all stepping up and becoming that. That's what Dr. Roto is all about. When the office is open, there's multiple rooms. And with each room, you have 
that DFS advice. You have the seasonal advice. You have all of the experts there to help you. It just matters of which room you want to go in. And we're all there in the lobby. Yeah. All right. I know what you're here for. You're here for the macho pick of the week. Oh, yeah. I'm doing over for the season. He's over right here. Yeah. I know you are macho, and that is awesome. The macho pick of the week is none other than, and I can't believe I'm saying this dude's name. I don't think he ever made the macho pick of the week. It's none other than Tony Pollard. Tennessee has looked like crap. Will Levis needs to stop throwing the ball. Dude, you're literally becoming like the second coming of Dan Jones, bro. Not Danny Jones. Remember when I ripped on Danny and called him no dimes? Danny no dimes Jones? That's exactly who he's becoming now. It's going to be Will run from the Levis or something. He's, he's not doing anything for anybody. You're literally losing the game for your team. You know how you write that? You get it to the running back. You know what's going to be great about that running back? Right now, his backup Spears is questionable. Maybe he's marked out by the time I'm recording this episode. Maybe not. But at the same time, he Pollard is going to get work. And this tells you something because right now, FanDuel Sportsbook is waiting on that decision. It, it, but DraftKings threw it out. So you're going to want to get that probably on FanDuel. It'll probably be a 70 yard. But what I was able to find with Tony Pollard, now mind you, he's 6,000 on DK. And he has 6,800 on FanDuel. But what I did find was a Russian receiving total alt line 75 plus for Tony Pollard on DraftKings. And that's going to be a negative 175. If you go up to the 80, 85, it goes to like a plus 100. So you're probably going to get about, you might get a little better odds with FanDuel. You might get like a 155 or 210. They might do that at 210. But you know, normally with the 70 yards, yeah, you could see it, maybe a 115. So we'll see what they come up with. Maybe that stat lines out. It wasn't when I before I recorded this podcast. So get Tony Pollard in your lineup. You know you're going to find him in my Ultra Contrarian Show somewhere. Man, I got a lineup for you. This, this, this lineup, it, it, it has a chance to go nuclear, but it will make you points. And I want to apologize to all of my p- teammates and everybody last week. You know, I, the FanDuel lineup was good. Daft King was stuck. That puts me at, you know, 3-1 and one for the season, practically 2-0 and oh on FanDuel, 1-1 one one on DraftKings. That's all right. I'm going to write that shit. That's what we do anyway. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. And always remember to bring the pain. May the points be with you.